Strips, a happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. 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 Shadow Cabinet Minister without portfolio, Conor McGinn. Yeah. 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 Brodul a ve an sha hanu a glor church on farty and luck debra. Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm delighted to be winding up this debate on behalf of the Labour Party and to be here today for this debate. Now, normally at this time on St Patrick's Day, I'd be up to me oxters and Guinness and beaten dockets at Cheltenham or at the Sheephaven Bay in Camden. But nonetheless, it's a pleasure to be here uh, in surroundings and company that might be uh, seen as more eminent but are definitely um, less crack, Madam Deputy Speaker. <laughs> uh, being Irish is something that I am very proud of and that is very important to me. And being Irish in Britain, this great country that has given me so many opportunities, uh, is another special and distinct layer to my and I know millions of other people's identities. My, Honourable friend from Rochdale deeply understands this, and I thank him not just for securing the debate today, but for his decades, decades of work in supporting the Irish in Britain and furthering the cause of good relations between Britain and Ireland. And I know that all members who have spoken here today are similarly committed, and I know that some of the all party group, like the member for Cardiff West and Bolton North East, can't be here today but similarly perform uh, and undertake such work. I know many of us will be thinking of our friend Jack Romy today. He would be so proud that we're having this debate, and of course he would be actively participating in it by making what he would describe as just seven brief points. <laughs> <laughs> we also think today uh, of many colleagues who took up the cause of the Irish in Britain at a time when it certainly was not politically advantageous and on occasion even personally dangerous. You and I, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, talk frequently of your great friend, uh, Sir Patrick Duffy, who was one such champion. Uh, I know the whole House will want to send him our best wishes. He's the oldest living former member of Parliament. At 101, he is still active and has written the story of his incredible life from Mayo uh, to NATO uh, in his autobiography. So to our community, its place here in Britain and its role in strengthening relations between Britain and Ireland, the first thing to say is, like British citizens in Ireland, the Irish in Britain have a special status. Now, that has greatly benefited us, and even as paths diverged when the UK left the EU, the maintenance of that unique arrangement is very welcome. Around half a million Irish-born people live in Britain, and I use Irish-born specifically because, of course, many more people here have Irish parents and more again Irish grandparents, as the members for Bury North West, Dumbartonshire and uh, Coatbridge alluded to. The contribution made by Irish people to British life is enormous, as my honourable friend from Dagenham, the Honourable Member for Angus said, economically, culturally, socially, in sport, and dare I even say it, politically, and of course, in public service. And perhaps the last two years have shown more than ever the role of Irish people in every part of society here as we came through the pandemic together. The thousands of nurses, doctors, clinicians, porters, cleaners in our National Health Service, the academics who researched and created the vaccine, including an Irish woman, Professor Tess Lamb. And of course, the first person to receive the vaccine was Margaret Keenan, an Irish woman. There were community groups and centres from London to Liverpool who put their shoulder to the wheel to help those who needed it, from providing companionship for older people to providing food parcels for families. The work of those organisations like our many Gaelic Athletic Association clubs and their volunteers was incredible. And the national charity Irish in Britain were to the fore in creating the Vaccine Lakeela, or Vaccine Together campaign, to encourage take-up of the vaccine in the community, a campaign I know it was strongly supported and assisted by my honourable friend uh, from Bristol South. Now, last week alone showed to me, this last week, the strength, diversity and extent of the Irish community. We had the British Irish Chamber of Commerce hold one of its council meetings in Parliament uh, last week. Over the weekend, the Taoiseach visited and was hosted in the City of London by the Lord Mayor, Alderman Vincent Keveney, the first Irish citizen to hold that role. On Sunday, the Liverpool Irish Centre hosted a lunch for Irish pensioners, and there are quite a few of them uh, in Ireland's 33rd county of Merseyside, which includes a few in my own constituency of St Helens and my honourable friend from uh, Riverside in the cities uh, as well. On Monday morning, I was with my right honourable friend, the Leader of the Opposition, as we visited the London Irish Centre. It simultaneously provides welfare support and advice for those in our community who need its help and assistance 
while the arts and cultural side of the centre's work showcases the best of our music, language, drama and literature. Would the Honourable Deputy give way? I will, of course. Can I thank you for giving way? I apologise, Madam Deputy Speaker, that I had an order debate in Westminster Hall, which I was sponsoring, so I couldn't be here for this debate. But I wanted to add my support to the Honourable, right Honourable Gentleman and to others for the debate and for the trust of what they're trying to achieve. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be uh, supporting it, at least in, in through this intervention. But can I ask him this question? Would he support the uh, request that I have, and I believe others have, and that would be for the Republic of Ireland to join the Commonwealth? I, th I, th I think I, I have a great deal of sympathy with what the Honourable Gentleman says. He, he, he tempts me to stray into policy areas that, uh, that, are, that are not mine. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass on his comments to the Shadow Foreign Secretary and ask, and ask, for, and ask for a response. But, but, it, but it, was a it was a nice try, I think. Um, <laughs> But, but he'll be delighted to know that just on Tuesday, the Royal Highnesses, uh, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, alongside, of course, the Honourable Member, uh, my friend from Hammersmith, visited the Irish Cultural Centre there. And I think they were even persuaded to take up the Byron and uh, play their part in an impromptu music session. And yesterday here in Parliament, I was very proud to co-host an event with the Irish Ambassador and CHAMP, the Peace and Reconciliation Organisation, for parliamentarians, and of course today on St Patrick's Day itself, we're having this debate. Now, the position and prominence of our community, therefore, has arguably never been stronger. But we have come through tough times, and the impact of the troubles was felt acutely by the Irish community here, as my honourable friend uh, from Hackney and the member for uh, Rutherglen said, many were shunned and subjected to anti-Irish racism personally and through the press. We know the prominent cases of miscarriages of justice, but also the treatment of the wider community as a suspect community and the impact of legislation like the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Now, I'm sure the Honourable Member for South Belfast would agree that outside of Northern Ireland, I think no group of people benefited more from or have been more supportive of the peace process and good relations between the UK and Ireland as the Irish in Britain. Now, we still face challenges. We know that many of our fellow Irish in Britain still suffer health inequalities with higher rates of cancers and increasing mental health conditions. And the government, and I know the Minister has a keen interest in this, uh, it has a duty to address that in a way it would for other communities. I will. I will. Uh, of course. Madam Deputy Speaker, in terms of the Irish traveller community through uh, the police bill, that that's a direct challenge to the recognition of the profound issues being faced by them as not only Irish travellers, uh, but Irish citizens who travel through here through the common travel area. I wonder if you maybe challenge the Minister on that point as well. well I think the Honourable Gentleman makes a very good point, and I, I uh, recognise, I acknowledge the incredibly uh, challenging work that he does to speak up uh, for Irish travellers in this House, and I hope that he knows that he has my uh, full, full support in that, in, in that task, as does the Irish uh, traveller community. Uh, now, we know too that the impact of the UK leaving the EU has meant that there have and there will be testing times for the relationship between Ireland and Britain. Now, the Irish community here, I think, has a distinctive role in helping to bridge those gaps or divisions when they arise and ensure all of us in positions of political leadership strive to maintain the forward momentum of strong cooperation between two countries who should always be each other's greatest allies. In that regard, I want to commend the work of the Irish Embassy here under the stewardship of Ambassador Adrian O'Neill. I'm also delighted that new consulates have been established in Cardiff and Edinburgh and, of course, in the north of England. The Irish and Britain feel, like everyone, an affinity and sense of solidarity with the Ukrainian people. Now, we can have no idea, of course, of what they are suffering, but many of our community have at least a sense of what it is to leave home, to miss home and to love your country. And that's why it was so moving to see the local Ukrainian community take part in a St Patrick's Day event with my honourable friend from Salford <coughs> at the Irish World Heritage Centre in Manchester as our honoured guests. And our Ukrainian friends helped lead the St Patrick's Day parade in London. We will continue to be their strongest allies and supporters. And so I conclude by saying what I said in my maiden speech some six years ago, and which I still feel holds today despite all the ups and downs challenges and changes. Where previously there was suspicion and mistrust, today there are friendship and cooperation between the United Kingdom and Ireland. There is no longer any contradiction in being Irish and British, 
and having feelings of loyalty and affinity to both countries. The contribution made by the Irish and Britain to society here has helped make that possible. It is valued and respected and has helped to make this country the great nation it is. My home, head and heart is in Ireland and England, in South Armagh and St Helens. I'm lucky and all the better for it. Fela Fadrig Conadeve Galer. Yeah. Yeah.